All right, so this video is going to focus on building the unit circle. So when I, what I want to do with this video is to walk you through how you create the unit circle. And that way you understand what makes the unit circle special and how you can create it versus just have to memorize it. And so what we start with with the unit circle is a basic coordinate plane. So to start with, we think of the x-axis over here on the right-hand side starts at 0 degrees. If we go up to 90 degrees, so just straight up and down, then we can come over here. Another quadrant at the end of the, the second quadrant is 180 degrees. Then here's the third quadrant. That would be 270 and then back to 360. So that's your basic layout for how you begin to break up the unit circle into smaller angles. But let's just start with the first quadrant. If we pull the first quadrant out and look at it, we can get the whole unit circle from this one quadrant. So if you understand how to build this first quadrant, then the rest of the unit circle falls into place. So this is the heart of all the information you're going to need. And so we break up the first quadrant into 30, 45, and 60 degree angles. So I drew those color coded here and I recommend you put them color coded in your notes to make this easier to look at. I pulled out the 30 degree angle. If we were to drop down a right angle right there and form a triangle, we can use what we know about special right triangles to find the lengths of all the sides. In the unit circle, we always consider the radius to equal one unit. So knowing the radius is one unit, that's our hypotenuse for our right triangle. So the short side would be one half and the long side would be the square root of three over two. So then I know the coordinates of this angle in my unit circle are the x value, so the horizontal distance was the square root of 3 over 2, and the y value is the vertical distance to that point, so that would be 1 half. So that value, that angle measure, has coordinates that correspond with the right angle, or excuse me, right triangle you could form by that angle with the x axis. All right, the 45, 45, 90 triangle works the same way, but has different relationships with the sides like we've talked about. You form a 45, 45, 90 triangle and it helps us find the coordinates of the 45 degree angle. So this hypotenuse is still one because that's the radius and the legs would end up as the square root of two over two when you rationalize the denominator for those. And so we can put that in place. The X value and the Y value for the 45, 40 degree angle or 45, 45, 90 triangle, which goes with the 45 degree angle on our unit circle is the square root of 2 over 2 for both x and y. Then for the last one, we have a 60 degree angle. So if we turn that into a right triangle, you have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. The hypotenuse is still 1. So your short side is 1 half, and your long side is the square root of 3 over 2. So your x value is 1 half, and your y value is the square root of 3 over 2. So notice that forms this first quadrant. We have the angle measures 30, 45, and 60. And now we have their coordinates, but their coordinates come from something you could create anytime, anywhere, as long as you understand special right triangles, you can build the unit circle so you don't have to memorize it. So the radius is one unit. We have our degree measures. Now what I've added in right here is that this is an important thing to know because you can be asked questions about sine and cosine. Cosine is always the X value. That was the one that if you consider this angle right here, theta, think about cosine was adjacent to that. So that goes with the x value. And sine was opposite of theta. So think about sine goes with the y value. So on every single pair you have for your coordinates, it's always cosine for the x and sine for the y. So they could ask you, for example, what's the cosine of 60 degrees? They mean for you to know that that's one half. So let's look at what this means for the rest of the circle. Like I've already said, if you can build the first quadrant, you can put these other three quadrants in their place very easily. And I know the next board is going to be a little overwhelming with information, but I'll talk you through it. And we're going to work on building one of these in class. Okay, so I have put everything on here just about that you need to know. I rewrote the first quadrant the way it was on the first board. So you notice I have my 30, 45, and 60 degree angle with the coordinates that we have already talked about. 
Now I want you to notice what happens. If you reflect this 30 degree angle over there and the 45 and the 60, they look the same over there. If you were to reflect them this way, they repeat again in this quadrant. And then if you were to reflect them that way, or if you were to reflect them down that way, they repeat all around this circle. And so if you notice, you have the square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. It goes directly with this one, which would be negative square root of 3 over 2, positive 1 half. So the signs are the only thing that changes. In the first quadrant, you have positive, positive. Here you have a negative and a positive. But notice, if I were to take this quadrant and fold it over, it would match up with that one. The signs just change because now you're in quadrant 2 instead of in quadrant 1. So the same thing happens for 45, 45, 90. They just change sign. And then 60, they change sign. Of course, the angle measures are changing because you're at 90 here. You add 30 degrees, so that's 120. You add 15, so that's the 45 degree angle equivalent over there. And then you had to add the 150 because that's 15 more than 135. Or you can think about here's 180, so that would be 30 degrees before you got to 180 where this was 30 degrees up over here. So they compare with one another. And the same thing continues around the whole circle. So you have, again, 30 degrees more is 210. That coordinates directly with that 30 degree angle. 30 degrees here, 330 because it's less than 360. And those all coordinate. Notice just the signs change depending on what quadrant you're in. So I made a little note down here. The first quadrant, once created, can give you all four quadrants. The signs change, but here's a little note of your signs in case you need to remember. It's positive, positive, negative, positive, negative, negative, and positive, negative. So then you can continue around the whole circle. The other thing I wanted to point out, I know you're going to have to write all of this good stuff down, and it's great information to have in your notes because you can refer back to it and answer lots and lots of questions about the unit circle. But one more thing that I did not put all the way around the circle, just to not make it too overwhelming, is that all degree measures have a radian equivalent. So what I would do is go through, and I've started in the first quadrant, I want you to continue with the radian equivalent of each degree measure. And so remember to convert degrees to radians, you multiply by pi over 180 and you reduce. So 30 times pi over 180 is pi over 6. So 30 degrees and pi over 6 are the degree and the radian equivalent of that angle. 45 degrees times pi over 180 would be pi over 4. So they could ask you, what is the cosine of pi over 4? And I would have to know that that's equal to the 45 degree angle, and the cosine is my x value. So the answer to that question is the square root of 2 over 2. Then I did the 60 degree angle the same way, so you can continue, and that way you also have the radian measures and you have all of this in your notes. So if they ask you a direct question about a certain measure around here and what the sine or the cosine is, you've got all of it in your notes. So take the time to write this down nice and neat. And notice I also added the coordinates of these four corners here. You have zero or 360 is located at one zero. 90 is at 0, 1, 180 is negative 1, 0, and 270 is 0, negative 1. So if they asked you what is the cosine of 270 degrees, it's the x value, which is just 0. So that would be the answer to that question. So take the time, like I say, write this as neat as you can in your notes, and I do.